All right, guys, new week. Um, we'll start out with the yield. Very first thing that I want to point out is if we look here, sell side of the curve, buy side of the curve. All right, just from the quarterly chart, we have a breaker here. But what you should be paying attention to is the fact that we have uh, down closed candles all right, in this market or what's supporting price. All right, going to a monthly chart, we can see clear, right? Uh, we go inefficiency stops, inefficiency stops. And right here, we trade back down into the range. Yes, we clear our inefficiencies. However, these down closed candles are supporting price. So this becomes, you know, our level of support, right? So we're still bullish. If I can measure this range, we trade down into discounts, down into the uh, monthly order block. And we should see this as a market maker buy program, meaning that down in here, we probably locate a shift in institutional order flow. All right, what I like about this um, in terms of supporting bullish ideas for the yield, which we're also transferring to the dollar, is we trade higher after reacting here, we get a down close candle, and this is going to create a failure swing in the lower time frame. But this down close candle, uh, there's an expansion from that, which is what we've since uh, traded down into. Okay, this is going to become clearer as we move to the lower time frames. Okay, right here, you can kind of see that market maker model uh, come more to life. All right, price expands here down into weekly order block, but it's more of a proposal block. And this area here is a an inefficiency. All right. So what this tells me is that certainly we want to be bullish. All right. I, I would support bullish ideas. And I'd imagine that price wants to get back to attacking previous months highs. All right. That's what we've attacked most recently. Okay, at least for the past four years we've been attacking previous months highs with the exception of a few uh retracements so i believe that the interest rate will continue to rise i don't see the fed easing interest rates anytime soon uh, but we'll call 5.03 and then i believe this level here so that means in the lower time frame four hour we should also see a market maker buy program here uh, reason being if you guys look down close candles, these guys here are supporting price. Down close candles on a monthly, quarterly um, are all supporting price as well. So institutional order flow is bullish. Looking at our daily chart, this is nothing but a retracement. And what I what I like here also, and you're gonna see this, uh, the inverse of this once we look at the bond market. All right, but this little area here is kind of what, this is what would solidify another bullish expansion for me. All right, so if we're seeing this as stops, inefficiency, or external range liquidity, internal, uh, we go external here, back to internal, which was that order block on the weekly. And then now we've cleared this inefficiency. So we create a short-term low, we clear the inefficiency. I wanna see if price is gonna clear out this last phase redistribution, which is also a balanced price range. All right, I wouldn't touch anything right here just yet, but. Um, what's significant is this down close candle, we trade higher. Here's another down close candle creating a failure swing. And basically a bullish order block is created as a reaction to this balance price range here. Um, so we have tons of ideas that with uh, tons of confluences that would support bullishness for the, the, uh, in, for the yield market, which would also uh, flow into the dollar. So let's go ahead and look at the dollar to see how we can make sense of this whole thing. So dollar kind of has the same image. The only difference is once we, if we consider the price action for the entire 2023, it is, it's not been a great market. Um, we're in a range of market, which is why we decided to kind of open up the assets and look at a few different, uh, different asset classes. But um, even though we're in a range of market, at least for, for the time being, right, we are bullish in terms of weekly, institutional order flow we can't there's nothing we can derive from monthly because this is there's nothing consistent here the only thing we can say is that for the past four or five months we've been attacking previous months highs all right right now we're under that monthly opening price trading down into that weekly pda rate all right so the draw should be 106.550 trading down into the weekly ob okay rejection blocks are, are being created here and then we look at our daily chart daily clears out One second. Okay. All right. So seeing this as a buy program running down into weekly order block. And uh, now the reaction here that we want to see is how is price going to treat these inefficiencies? All right. We've since come up. 
we cleared the inefficiency. Um, but what I want to see here is just like we saw on the yield, we saw the yield kind of create a down close candle, uh, speed above that candle, creating another order block. I want to that that's that's what I want to see to establish order flow here. Um, but I do believe that you know fundamentals will, will guide the dollar in this case. Uh, but if so, then we'll, we'll trade in 106.550 and potentially even the high of 2023. Okay, uh, so I'd like to thank open low high close for the dollar this week. Let's move into the bond market and then we'll jump into uh, Euro USD and the other pairs. All right. So looking here, if we look at a monthly chart, a sell side of the curve, right, or buy side of the curve here sell side of the curve. So we're certainly on the sell side from a monthly perspective. This would be the current dealing range that we're in. Prices traded up <clears throat> into this uh, monthly order block. After trading into that order block, right, we've come back lower. We've cleared out sell side of balance. And then we've also created another monthly order block trading lower. So the most recent price action is traded into this monthly order block. We should be expecting more bearish prices. Let's go to our weekly chart. On our weekly, right, you can see here this mitigation block from this failure swing, right, and then we trade up into that inefficiency. Uh, for for us for a while, we've been calling out these equal lows at the one twelve twelve level, uh, but but ultimately we should see if this you know if we're still bearish, price should go from here to the premium rate down to discounted rate, right, and then we have these levels serving as our relatively equal lows, right. Um, NFP should be coming up. Maybe I don't think this week, maybe the next week, but uh, you can guys can see this on a daily chart. So this is this is what we were seeing on the yield, but this is just the inverse of the yield uh, where price is right at this level. If we trade through this level, that should take us down to that should easily take us down to the 11212 uh, point. So at as of right now, I don't want to touch anything to do with the dollar just yet. <clears throat> what I'd like to see is how price responds to um, this last phase reaccumulation on the bond market. And then also the inverse would be last phase redistribution on the yield market. All right. Uh, but so far, from a higher time frame, everything points to uh, higher prices for the dollar. OK, let's move into uh, pound USD. All right. And this is where this kind of gets shaky, because if if we're seeing bullish prices on the dollar, <laughs> then that kind of trips me up. I'll be honest. Because as I'm looking at pound USD, this would look like a market maker buy program. All right, we we react to this monthly fair value gap. This is our weekly. All right, we've traded above this candle. This area should act as a breaker. We kind of have a breaker and a fair value gap combination right here. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and say we should attack previous week's high. Right, that's what we've been attacking from uh, most recently, and I'd, I'd like to see us trade through here and here. But I want to throw out a disclaimer. This is kind of this is kind of bumping heads with the analysis for the dollar, okay? Which is why I'm saying, hey, I want to wait for the yield and the bond market to give me to give me some clarity, and, and so we can confirm if it's actually a smart money reversal or not. Um, yeah, and then we have the inefficiency here that we traded and closed through, All right? So previous week's high should be a target. All we can do is, is allow price to trade down into here. Fair valuation at 263.50 is what we'll call this level. Uh, we'll see what price does in here. I don't want to give any um, hard call outs just yet because of uh, there's kind of a bit of controversy in terms of what we're seeing here and then what we're seeing in the, the, the yield market. Same thing is going to apply for Euro USD. All right, we're, we're in a a uh, horrible range, and this is in part due. Uh, this is something that Vision brought up. Uh, this is this is this is similar to time distortion, right, or a consolidation market before a FOMC meeting, all right, before high impact news release, right. If you think about the high impact news release for this year, we have the election coming up. So uh, we believe that we're going to keep seeing this type of market until the election can go from consolidation to expansion. Uh, now, whether that expansion is here or here, it is a very tough call at this point. Um, looking at our weekly, we've been attacking previous week's highs. It's been primarily open, low, high close. 
right? And if we're, if we're saying open, low, high, close for this week, that means we want to see what happens as price gets into this inefficiency. Um, not a lot of volume last week. We traded completely inside of the previous week's range. But I do believe we'll take out uh, 108, or 10, let's just call it 10900. Um, what we do from there, once again, it's a tough call because um, this analysis is going to clash heads with what we're seeing in DXY because DXY yield and bonds will make us believe that the dollar is going to go higher. However, the dollar is going higher. There's no way that your USD can go higher. Right? Looking at the daily chart, order flow on the daily is bullish. Right, Down close candle support and price. Uh, we've we've cleared out a weekly level right here, okay. But the only question, the only thing is that we haven't, we can't really say that weekly order flow is 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 bullish, right? At least for right here, it's bearish. Um, and this is what you get in the range of market. So for this market right here, guys, I'd say, you know, don't be too aggressive with bias at this point. Understand that and just respect the fact that we're in a range. It's just, it's just that simple. Um, now let's move to some markets that are a lot more clear. Uh, looking at the uh, Euro index, I actually like this market. It's not a market that I've played with for a long time, but I, I like this market. So let's look at a quarterly chart. Down close candles are supporting price. All right, this is certainly a bullish market. We're on our monthly chart here. This would be the current range that we're inside of. And we've traded down into the monthly inefficiency. Okay, and we've had reactions from there. If we look here. On our weekly, after taking out that previous month's low weekly inefficiency, now we're seeing weekly order block is what we're reacting from. All right, if we go into our daily chart, this is just a retracement down into this failure swing or this mitigation block. And uh, I believe we'll run and we'll attack these equal highs. All right, so I want to thank open, low, high, close, wanting to see price trade under that weekly open into a discounted rate. I like this area. This should be a strong area of support. Volume and balance in this little balance price range right here. Um, I would think that you know this is this is a trade that I or an asset that I I'd be willing to place risk on. Low resistance signature here, bullish market, everything's bullish. Um, if wrong in this scenario, I'd be one hundred percent fine with this. All right, but you know we want to see us trade under the weekly open. The way you could play this is on a lower time frame. Look from here to here for a market maker buy program. All right, looking for a smart money reversal in a lower time frame. Uh, but you, know, you can also see right now we're on the sell side of a curve, but when we've taken this short-term low out right here, we've, we've closed in this inefficiency, which is, a, which is a pretty good sign, right? So let's see if we can make it up to the 5120 level. Uh, NASDAQ, S&P, bullish market, uncharted territory. Okay, but what we have here is a strong point of order flow. So we'll see how this, this candle closes. We only have four days left <coughs> within this monthly candle. Um, we saw the market maker buy program here as we traded into that inefficiency. And then there was a pretty decent expansion. Every week has attacked previous week's high, right? Open, low, high, close, open, low, high, close. We're not going to change it just because it's a new week, all right? We want to think open, low, high, close. I'm looking for PD arrays inside of this weekly candle, all right? Now, we have this down close candle, but this is not an order block. So, you know, price could very well trade lower, attack some type of you know, previous day's low or something like that, or we could trade into the inefficiency right here. But I want to call out 18953 as the next draw recording, all right? Wanting to see open, low, high, close. Now, does that mean that we, because we're saying open, low, high, close, that this week has to be a bullish candle? No, we, this could be a retracement week where we trade down into the daily, these uh, weekly order blocks here, which would mean that our bias is wrong for the short term, but for the long term perspective or the higher time frame perspective, right? We're in alignment with order flow, all right? Uh, so that is our US index market. Uh, we can take a look at Bitcoin. So Bitcoin 74,000 is what I'm calling out. We trade it down, we react to the weekly. Fair value gap. Uh, then we create down down close candles to support price. Going to our daily chart, you can see the market maker buy program here, smart money reversal, and then we're having our reaccumulation phases. So 
uh, I believe that this is the next reaccumulation phase to take us up into that 74,000 level and potentially even higher. So I want to thank open low high close here as well. Moving to, uh, let's look at gold. All right, so we talked, we spoke about gold um, because, so we've taken out, we've had SMT here with gold euro. I'll place that on the chart. Here we go. All right, so gold euro never took out all time highs. All right, and then we get this move down. Um, but I'm not, that doesn't mean I'm going to just say, hey, we're, this is a trend reversal. I'm not picking the top because order flow it for a long time has been bullish. So I'm, I'm not going to just say this is the top of gold. Um, I think because we have four days left, we might set ourselves up to run into this inefficiency, right? This is a liquidity void on the weekly chart, daily chart, fair valuation rest here. But we'll see. Uh, we'll see what we get. I don't want to be aggressive because if weekly candles are supporting price and this down close candle, this is the order block. We've closed above this level twice. We've been attacking previous week's highs. I don't want to trade too aggressively inside of this candle. All right. And what I also don't want to do is I don't want to trade aggressively against these uh, daily fair value gaps. So what I want to see is I like to see if this up close candle becomes an order block. All right, meaning I want to see price trade into the inefficiency, some reaction, and then trading and closing below here. Um, if that happens, then there's the potential that we trade and we take out this low. All right, but I would say let's be a little more patient on gold and allow uh, certain things to form. Uh, we can look at silver. I do like silver. On a weekly chart, right? Weekly candles are supporting price. What I'm seeing here with silver is uh, consolidation, expansion. Right, retracement, you know, then we push here. So I'm saying stops, inefficiency, stops, inefficiency, potentially back to stops. So we should think market maker buy program on a lower time frame here. All right. This is our current dealing range. Prices potentially just headed to discounts. So we'll watch this. Um, I don't think we'll, we'll get strong movement back up this week, but we'll watch this um, over the next week or so. All right, and we, we'd certainly at this rate, it's certainly looking like we'll have SMT uh, with gold. All right, uh, that's that. Let's go into Euro Swiss. Okay, so Euro Swiss, we've been calling out this yearly fair value gap at one one or one zero one. All right, and we're closing in on that fair value gap. We call that level out way down here. Looking at our Monthly chart, we've been attacking previous month's highs, right? Uh, we're on our way to that level. So going into this week, uh, from right here, I was I was grading the price swing, but we had our consolidation around that 50% grade. We trade back down into this breaker. Uh, down close candles, support and price. The most ideal scenario is for us to trade into this inefficiency, right? Right here. Okay, fair valuation is here. Uh, I don't think we need to go too deep inside of this level, but if we trade right inside of this area, uh, we should see on a lower time frame, four hour, one hour, we should look for a market maker buy program. Um, but if we continue to push higher, I don't think there's opportunity. I I'm I'm looking for a retracement on this pin. All right, if we do retrace, then that sets the stage for uh, easy bullish opportunities. All right, um, AJ, we do have CPI. AJ this week. Well, the reason I like AJ is because we have this weekly inefficiency, not a lot of volume in this down close candle. Um, the interest rate for the yen is a lot weaker than the pound right now. So um, we're believing that we'll easily run out 105.5 as our next target. But we do have CPI. Uh, I want either CPI with Aussie or the yen. I may be wrong, but it's one of the two this week. So we'll be alert for that. But I would like to see us trade and take out these equal lows, get inside of this area, and then show some type of smart money reversal to take us up here. Um, that is it. All right, that's all I have, guys. I uh, hope you guys learned something from this. Um, we will be back with a midweek outlook as well.